Hello, my darlings, and welcome back to Radio Wasteland, the best in paranormal. I'm your host, Chauncey Allworth, and this is my co-host, Kara Kittrick. Hello. Kara, you got some news for us today. I do, and most of it's faintly alarming. So, a deadly virus described in the media as a zombie virus may... Uh, may spread to humans in the near future, experts warn. The virus, called chronic wasting disease, or CWD, has been seen in 24 states and results in a constellation of symptoms, including, quote, drooling, stumbling, lack of fear of people, aggression, and death. CWD was first seen in the 1960s and is caused by a prion rather than a virus or other pathogen similar to mad cow disease, Although it has been known that the disease could pose a risk to primates since 1997, experts from the University of Minnesota raised the alarm again at the Minnesota State Capitol last week. Quote, it is probable that human cases of chronic wasting disease associated with consumption of contaminated meat will be documented in the years ahead, one expert said. Uh, at the same time, the Trump administration has given a significant boost to artificial intelligence research in this country, especially in the realm of defense. Um, although the Trump administration could not promise new money to research programs without the aid of Congress, they have directed agencies to prioritize in artificial intelligence research and allocate funds accordingly. This move comes at a time when uh, China has been ramping up its own AI research for many years. Reportedly, the U.S. would have to spend tens of billions of dollars per year to catch up. At present, the AI budget is only a relatively insignificant $1.1 billion. And on the topic of artificial intelligence and defense, AI is now being used to produce fake news, Bloomberg reports. Researchers at OpenAI have trained a sophisticated AI to analyze patterns in top-sharing stories and produce new articles from whole cloth with surprisingly convincing results. Stories produced included a piece about the discovery of a herd of unicorns in the Andes and a piece about a tax scandal involving John McCain. Having read these articles, I'd say anyone who's actually reading will notice that these stories are basically gibberish. But unfortunately, anyone who just reads the headline or skims the article without really paying attention might not notice that the whole thing is procedurally generated nonsense. Fortunately, readers on the Internet always read the whole article thoroughly and with a critical eye towards potential falsehoods before sharing on social media, so it's probably not an issue. Finally, a study released Tuesday detailed some of the impacts of climate change by the year 2080, According to lead author Matt Fitzpatrick from the University of Maryland, New York could feel like Arkansas by then, and many cities could experience climates with no modern equivalent in North America. Climates are expected to shift very approximately about 600 miles to the south. But that's more than 60 years from now, so back to you, Chauncey. All right. So, yeah, yeah, climate change. It's uh, Before I came here, I was talking about my wife, she was telling me that um, <clears throat> there was uh, a study on why people don't believe facts when they're set in front of them. And, uh, you know, one of them obviously was that people don't believe the source. Sure. Um, you know, that's an obvious one. But another one was sort of like if you have a um, like a relationship and your relationship is a jerkhead or cheating on you and people choose to deny what's in front of them because it makes them need to focus on themselves might be a part of it because, um, you know, climate change I think is scary for people because it would involve focusing so much on every aspect of what you're doing from driving to eating to, sure. to all of these things and stuff yeah. like that. So, so it's a, a little unnerving that, uh, we seem very willing to to disbelieve, I guess. Yeah. Well, I I think facts don't convince people because a lot of the time facts just aren't very convincing. Well, I think people are mostly convinced by, you know, emotion and stories and things that really have nothing to do with facts at all. Yeah, I, I agree. And uh, I think that that's very scary. And a case in point would be your story from before that with uh, AI generated <laughs> fake news, you know. Um, that is absolutely wild. It's so right. wild that we are that we are so impressionable. We really are. You know, not to bring it back to my <laughs> wife again, but I tease my wife about how she's um she's on the brink of like being absorbed into a cult. 
You know, because oh, no. she's so Why? she's so impressionable, and she always wants to believe the good and stuff. So if so it, it could happen at any time. It could. I, I'm going to come home, and she's going to be gone, and she's going to be part of some cult, and then I'm going to have to rescue her. And uh, you know, it's right. going to get weird. It's going to be well, like the, deprogramming can cost many thousands of dollars. So. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not spending that. <laughs> you know, that's pretty much. You'll, you'll just lock her at home in her robes with her incense. Right, but how do you convince the world to? Um, research something or at least have a better understanding of something before they share it or or talk about it or or even share it or even get them to share it in a way that's asking hey what do you think to take some input from other people you how know? do you get people to do that yeah I don't know, powerful mind control drugs in the water supply. Well, I I get I get that you're a hateful cynic. You know, I I appreciate that. I love that about you. But uh, you know, this is not going to fix the world. No. You know, hateful cynicism is is probably not going to help. You know I what? Guess. What what one person can do, another can do. You know, we are all capable <laughs> of doing these things. A lot of people just do these things out of fear. They're scared. They don't want to. They don't want to change. They don't want to dig deeper. They don't want to okay. look further. You know? An actual answer then to that question is more education and a better economy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think you're probably very right on a better Wages economy. haven't in increased since the 1980s, basically. Hmm. But the cost of everything else has gone way up, including especially housing and health care. So, you know, even though the economy is good in terms of unemployment being bad since the Great Recession, basically most people have been fairly poor. Yeah, I... And so that is going to make it hard for people to care much about anything other than their immediate survival. Yeah, that's true. That's very much true. And then, uh, you know, we can't go past the uh, the fact that Trump apparently is investing in AI. This is sort yeah. of... People are, are praising this as a good move. Actually. It is a good move, but it's, it's, I would it's agree with. motivated militarily, I'm sure. Uh, but so yeah. are a lot of our Basically technological is, advancements, yes. you know, so are a lot of our technological mm -hmm. advancements. And so uh, I'm all for this because uh, personally, I find AI really kind of scary. Sure. And yeah. I find it sort of contrary to the human condition. Mm -hmm. But I also know that everybody else is going to be doing it. So we probably better know as well. Right. So I found this story on the Washington Post editorial board, actually, which is <laughs> – I probably don't need to say normally very, very critical of Trump, mm -hmm. but they were hailing it as a positive move. And they said, what do they say? Researchers see machine learning as the electricity of the 21st century with the potential to transform life across all sectors. Yeah. So I yeah. think that's true. I do, too. And then, of course, we can't pass up too quickly the zombie virus, chronic right. wasting disease. It sounds like mad cow. Yeah. And, you know, um, I think there's some research to believe that Mad Cow um, really sort of comes from from cannibalism. Really? Yeah. That um, I wasn't aware of that. I, I might be totally wrong on this, but then Mad Cow. I know Cow, many prion diseases do, yes. Right, was was uh, given to, from feeding cows to other cows. Oh. And that, that we have the laughing disease is very similar that uh, cannibalistic tribes who eat the brain and spinal right. cord. Right. Uh, we're getting this. All right. So uh, we're coming up on break here. Our guest coming up next is Ryan Griffiths. He's a TV presenter and paranormal investigator and psychic medium known for his work as a psychic medium across the UK and his show, The Hauntings and uh, Haunting Events UK. And uh, he is going to come in and he is going to tell us about the haunted United Kingdom. All right. All right, welcome back to Radio Wasteland, and our guest, Ryan Griffiths. He's a TV presenter and paranormal investigator and psychic medium. Ryan, do we have you there with us? Indeed you do, my friend, indeed you do. Man, you got a long resume. Uh, and yeah, I, you know, I was adding to it, believe it or not, just about half an hour ago, and um, I thought, wow, this is getting a little bit long now. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, it just shows that you've been busy. Um, yeah, Andrea was, uh, Andrea is our booking, uh, person for the listening audience. And, uh, and she was saying that, uh, that you got a busy schedule. And so we really appreciate you being on here with us. No, I appreciate you having me on. It's a pleasure. So, uh, where are you at right now? What are you doing right now? I am sat just in my office trying to remain a little bit quiet as it's 2 a.m. in here in the UK. So, um, it is very, very quiet. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, perfect time imagine. to talk about hauntings, then. It is the perfect time. Perfect. I'm almost tempted to <laughs> get the old K2 out and get down into the basement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know, one thing that I find incredibly interesting about, um, you know, England and Great Britain in general is that here in the United States, uh, Kara and I were talking about this last week, that yeah. there's really no building older than, than 400 years at best here in the United yeah. States. You know, there there might be a few, a few um, you know, uh, artifact the areas and stuff like that. states from the 1930s. Ooh. Right, exactly. Well, that's kind of what it is, you know. <laughs> but, the, but there you're, you're liter- literally dealing with some extremely old buildings, you know, and uh, they all have a story to tell, I'm sure. Um, yeah, where I live now at the moment in Nottinghamshire is um it's littered. I mean it's it's a fantastic place to live because there's so many historical places that you can go and either just during the day or to investigate on the evening. So you know, I I guess we got to kind of start out with with uh, probably old news for you, but for us here in the states, you know, it's going to be new and exciting. And and that is, you know, what are the probably most famously haunted places in the UK? There is so many. The list is absolutely huge, as you can imagine. Um, however, ones that I believe your listeners may well recognise is places such as Third East Drive, the Black Monk House. <laughs> which um, famously Nick Groff um, took his show Paranormal Lockdown UK there. Um, and it is an absolute... I mean, it's notoriously Europe's most violent poltergeist um, mm. case Case that happened back in the 60s, I believe. Um, so fairly recent when you look at historical facts, you know, um, you're speaking about 400-year-old buildings. That's a council house that was built in the 50s, so it's not terribly old. But, um, yeah, again, most famous uh, location in the UK. And then there's the Enfield Poltergeist, which is a similar case. Um, For me, I would say the most popular in the UK at the moment has to be um, the village in Mansfield, which is actually about 10 minutes from where I live. Um, And I, I go there quite a lot. And it's just the bookings that we get for that place is unbelievable. Um, it's just everyone wants to be there. Um, television, radio, public, fantastic. So this is part of your uh, your business, Haunted Events UK? Um, it's Yes, it is part of Haunted Events UK, but what it is is it's just one of the locations that we um, obviously have on the evening um, and we take the public, but other teams can bring their own um, events there if that makes sense as well. Yeah, I understand. It's not yours, but it's one of the places that you take your your tours yes. and your groups to. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I but, get that. So, uh, you know, has anything ever happened to one of your tour groups where they've been a little freaked out? Oh, very much so. <laughs> um, actually, quite recently, um, I say recently, just coming towards the end of last year, and ironically at Halloween, uh-huh. um, we recently did uh, at the village. We did. Um, a Halloween live for Facebook um, and we had hundreds of viewers watching live and we had to cut it short on about three different occasions because the poltergeist activity was ridiculous it's um, they had like the fire exit doors now the whole place is surrounded by CCTV on the outside mm. um, which we we have access to during the night so we can see who's moving about if anyone and etc um, and on this particular night, we were down um, just doing the usual investigation, calling out, is anyone there? You know, the, the, the standard things you could imagine that we would say. And all the fire exit doors simultaneously started rattling and banging so loudly that our viewers at home were getting frightened for our safety. Um, so that, although that, nothing happened to us as such, it was still quite a frightening experience, not only for us being the investigators, but for our viewers as well. Yeah, well, that's uh, that's that's definitely some good viewing, in my opinion, you know. Cause, <laughs> yeah. Because so I watched some of those shows it. like, uh, you know, I don't know, what is it, Ghost Hunters here in the States. Yeah. And, you know, it was like season after season of not really anything going on, and I'm just all, you know. 
Sure. I need something a little more terrifying. Um, so what is, you know, uh, you're using the word poltergeist a lot. What is yes. a, a poltergeist specifically? Is that like a ghost that's able to interact with the real world, or, or what is that? I think the, 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 the layman term to, um, to, to put it across would be to just to say that, you know, it's a physically active energy. It's a physically active um, spirit, if you like, um, where... Quite in most common cases, things will get moved, things will get thrown, people can get touched or pushed over and things like that. So if you like, it's an interactive ghost, if you like. You know, um, that would be the easiest way to understand it. The um, more technical side of it is it's a build-up of energy that quite commonly reacts when teenagers are going through puberty and things like that, you know, um, because their heightened state of energy inside them is raised to a level that it aids that energy that's in place if I'm making any sense. No, I see. It's, it, it, uh, it's sort a of very this, complicated. The stress and the emotions of being a teenager sort of act yes. as an antenna. So if if you think of it um, like when you get depressed or, or when you feel at a, at a low point, everything else around about you seems very negative, doesn't it? You know, it, it's, it's almost like like attracts like. So when their hormones are all over the place, when they're moods are all over the place when they feel very anxious um it just it seems to um what well, what's the word i'm looking for it seems to encourage activity i see yeah yeah uh, uh, some some scientists some scientists will say that it's actually the teenager using some sort of telepathy um subconscious telepathy to make the things move and things if that makes sense as well oh yeah 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 it it's does. very strange yeah, and, you know, that really makes sense, you know, because, uh, you know, uh, obviously there's not a huge amount of understanding of the of the afterlife, but when it comes to ghosts and poltergeists and stuff, you know, it tends to be uh, associated with some sort of traumatic event that keeps them held here. Yes, And yes, so yes. those feelings would uh, amplify that. Well, exactly, I couldn't agree more. And I always say to people, don't always jump to the paranormal uh, and, and saying, oh, it's a par it's paranormal activity when something happens. Always question absolutely everything. Um, yes, I'm a medium. Yes, I give readings. Um, I do all these different things. <coughs> Excuse me. However, I would always say never stop asking questions. Yeah. You know, so it's always look for the root cause. Is there a window open when activity happens? Is there people moving about in another room? Um, as a some sort of electrical device that's malfunctioning, check these things out and then rule them out, and then you've got a better chance of saying, well, yes, I have activity happening here. So I assume that is an active part of any investigation you go on yes, and you kind of go absolutely. through and check all that stuff first. Yes, I mean, it's not what you think. I mean, more, I mean, what we see on the TV, naturally, as you can imagine, is um, the majority of it is semi-scripted. Um, so they will have certain targets to hit if that makes sense so you know what we do is very different to that we sit back we look at what's going on we try to analyze it as best we can and if we can we always say to our viewers on facebook or whatever we always say you know we leave it up to you to decide whether it's paranormal or not right right so so basically when you guys do one of these things you guys have all of your all of your cameras are, are basically on Facebook and on live, and so all of your followers are able to watch any investigation you're doing? Yeah, absolutely. Um, of course, if we're doing a TV project, naturally, as you can imagine, there's certain commissions and contracts and things like that you've got to take into account. So they, they won't be able to see that side of it. But what we take onto Facebook, we try to bring the viewer every step of the way. So they, can, they decide what equipment we use. They decide what approach we use. They decide where we go and how we do it. Um, and we try to get them involved as much as possible. That is a really cool, fun way to get that done. I, I like it. I'm going to have to check this out. I'm pretty excited yes, about this. Yes, <laughs> You know, if you're uh, in the UK, you'll have to tag along sometime. I I will. I I I've been there twice in fourth grade and eighth grade. I don't see it in my financial budget in the near future, but I hope so. <laughs> I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Yeah. All right. So uh, you're listening to Ryan Griffiths here on Radio Wasteland. We're going to break. We'll be back in about three or four minutes. Come on back. 
All right, welcome back to Radio Wasteland and our guest, Brian Griffiths. We're talking about Haunted UK. Um, you know, Ryan, how how much does um, – it seems like anytime I'm talking to a paranormal investigator, there's always somebody in their group who is – is the medium, you know, are you yeah. the one in your group who is the medium or, or do you feel, or are all of you doing this? Um, oh, technically, yes, I'm not, I'm the only one who is, who is a medium. Um, but I actually, when I go on a paranormal investigation, I actually don't use that as much as you would think. I prefer much, much prefer to be a paranormal investigator and to see what we can experience as a group rather than jumping on everything and saying, oh, this is spirit, I've got this spirit, I'm picking up on this, or I'm, I'm experienced, you know. Yeah. Um, I much prefer the paranormal side, uh, investigator side, sorry, um, on an investigation, um, rather than the mediumship, believe it or not. Um, yeah, no, I I do, because it's maybe yeah. a little more visceral, you know, when you're... It certainly makes for more interesting video. Yeah, oh. yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> But, you know, being a medium, you know, maybe it takes some level of concentration, some level of stillness. Uh, and really, when you're an investigator, it takes a sort of involvement in being out there moving around and and all that, I'm yeah. guessing. Well, I mean, there's, there's certain times that as much as I would prefer to be a paranormal investigator than the medium, there's sometimes I just can't avoid being the medium because certain things will happen or certain things will come through that... Um, as much as I try to keep them to myself so that everyone else can experience it, I have to voice it and I have to say what I'm picking up on or experiencing, etc. Mm -hmm. You know, this is kind of a weird question, but I, I, I'm always curious about this with mediums because, you yeah. know, um, the the world of the paranormal and the world of ghosts and the afterlife, I always wonder, like, about the culture of that world, you know, so like we're dealing with spirits and a medium will tap into a spirit, but are spirits tapping into one another or are they each on their own level? You know, is there some sort of level of culture going on to the afterlife? Uh, you know, I mean, I'm sure we're not going as far as Beetlejuice, but do you get what I'm saying? Well, yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. Like, um, I assume you mean like are they interacting with each other as well as they're interacting with us, the mediums or the, or the individuals? Is that is that what you mean? Yeah, I mean like so. One idea might be that it's a bunch of ideas and energies just sort of haphazardly floating around that we're tapping into, but the other might be that there's some sort of connective tissue world um, out there. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I'm, I actually. The, the religion that I practice and that I follow is um, spiritualism, and what we believe is, um, if you like, let's just, to make it easier, call it heaven, but what we refer to is a place called Summerland. Now, obviously, it's not somewhere that's got lo roasting hot sun and nice beaches, but <laughs> <laughs> um, it's basically, in essence, if you look at our daily lives uh, as individuals, now we can go to the shops, we can um, uh, go to work and go to schools and different things. It's very similar. I mean, everyone's entitled their own opinion and their own belief system. Of course they are. Um, and my belief system is that it's very similar um, to what we have now, only a higher state of consciousness. So there's a higher level of understanding, if that makes sense. So very much they can talk to one another. Um, my guides as a medium connect with the spirit who wants to speak to the, the person that's here in the living. So, of course, they're interacting with each other. Um, so, yes, I, I absolutely believe that it's very much similar to what we're experiencing here. All right. So um, when when you guys are going out and you're doing an, an investigation, you know, what kind of, um, you know, Karen and I were talking about this earlier, you know, um, what type of equipment are you guys taking with you? Is this a... Uh, is this uh, pretty scientific on your on your level, is it, or is it mostly a visceral experience with the audience? Um, it's a bit of all of that actually, but, but predominantly we are like we like to go for the old school techniques and the old school ways of doing things because and using your your own senses. Someone once asked me recently and said, um, "You know, Ryan, what would you say is the best piece of paranormal equipment?" And I said, "Yourself." Because I always say to people, pay attention to how you feel, the different ailments that your body has before you go into a location, um, and then see if anything changes throughout 
and notice when it changes. Was is there activity happening at that point that you suddenly got a headache or you suddenly got a pain in your lower back or or etc. You know, um, but other equipment that we use is like K2 meters that I sort of briefly touched on at the start there. Um, SB7 spirit boxes, which sort of scan the the FM and AM radio frequencies at different speeds, and it's said that spirit can manipulate that to throw out random words um, that correspond with questions that have been asked. Um, SLS cameras, um, and don't even ask me what that is. I'm sure it says structured light. Uh, I forget what it is now. Uh, it's just, it's like the Xbox stick man, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, I was actually I going to ask you, but I, you cut me. <laughs> I can't think for the life of me what it is now. It's, it's structured light. Oh, that's embarrassing, that is. Uh, oh. But there you go. You, we use the SLS. Yeah. And we use the, the portal and things like that, which is, again, very similar to the, the SB7, hmm. except it, it cuts out the white noise and makes things a lot more clearer. Instead of being random words, it, you it, you can hear sentences and sometimes different sounds and noises that are allegedly, and I'll say that word because it's only fair, um, allegedly coming from spirit. Yeah, that that makes sense because we were talking about how we wanted to do this. You know, we wanted to put <laughs> right. ourselves out there and uh, do it. You know, we obviously we have a, a paranormal show. We tend to come at it a little bit more as skepticism, but um, mm-hmm. you know, there there are two that it's really kind of hard to be skeptical about. And one is UFOs and one is ghosts, and both for the same reason yeah. that there are so much. Everyone knows someone who's seen one or the other. You yeah, know? everyone of knows course. somebody who is credible that saw somebody, something, and told them a story, you know. And uh, and even I have a few stories in my life that I really can't make sense of. I don't, I don't know where to put them, but, uh, you know. Yeah. So um, I assume that you find... What about in your life? Do you have people that are basically, uh, when you tell them that you're a medium ghost hunter, do they tell you you're nuts? Oh, I get it all the time, my friends. I get it all the time. <laughs> uh, it's yeah. one of them things that you just sort of, it's, you just live with it. It's like when you're a politician and, you you know, people sort of throw the rotten tomatoes at you every now and again. You just deal with it. And um, as, as my old dad would say, you know, you just got to roll with the punches and just uh, believe it, it, you know, stand proud and what you believe in, you know, and and just keep just keep moving forward. Yeah. yeah, you know, it was interesting in our in our talking here. You were basically saying that um, you know a couple of these poltergeists were in newer structures. It makes me wonder mm-hmm. if there's anything to um, to some idea of degradation over time. You know, like the longer a spirit is there, do they start to settle in? Do they start to become comfortable and, and less active? Well, I believe, um, speaking of less active, I would say that, um, I, yeah, I kind of agree with what you're saying, because it's it's like if you're here again, we, I refer to us being here in the physical and how similar it is, if you're an individual here and you're alive, you have a certain character and a certain belief system and a certain um, attitude, if you like. Um, so when you pass over, you'll be no different, in my opinion, um, but just a little bit more worldly wise because you'll understand how it all works obviously so if here in the physical someone started saying to you okay i want you to do five cartwheels down that street every five minutes um for the next week um well i guarantee you you won't even get the hour before you get annoyed at doing it oh yeah i'd break my uh, neck by the third one (laughs) yeah mate i wouldn't even get the first one down what are you talking about (laughs) Yeah, no, but I get what you're saying. You know, you start to become accustomed. You start to... Yeah, so I don't see... that. In my opinion, yes, there's different energies out there that people would deem as evil and such like and things, but they're individuals, and they're not performing monkeys, as I always say to the public. You know, so they will, just like me and you, say, I've had enough now, I'm going to have a week off, and then suddenly people go there and they say, well, this is supposed to be a most haunted location, but there's nothing happening. It's absolutely dead, forgive the, the pun, right. you know. Um, and then suddenly a new group, or the same group even, goes the following week, and it's the most active place in the planet. Right. It's just people need a rest. Spirits need a rest. 
Well, I am glad that you brought up the topic of uh, evil because I am a horror movie fanatic, and that's what I want to ask you about when we come back uh, from our break that we're coming up on here. I want to ask you about, you know, good and evil, how that applies, and if there's anything uh, truly scary out there that people should be scared of. You're listening to Ryan Griffiths here on Radio Wasteland. Come on back for all of that. All right, welcome back to Radio Wasteland and our guest, Ryan Griffiths. We are talking about the paranormal and hauntings in general, uh, especially in the United Kingdom. But uh, here, I I really want to know, you know, ghosts have been so associated with just fear and danger and stuff over the years. You know, is there anything truly... I know most people would basically say, uh, you know, ghosts aren't inherently evil or good, but is there anything evil out there? Well, I, I would absolutely, I would say um, there is, but what I would say is, as well as a lot of it has been glamorized through Hollywood and um, the different shows as a, on TV and different things like that, so a lot of it is already subconsciously in your mind before you enter a location, so if you experience mm-hmm. something, no disrespect to anybody listening or any of our viewers over here in the UK or anything like that, but the majority of folk will immediately say it's evil before understanding what's actually taking place and what's actually happening. But in light of what I was saying just before the break about um, being the same here in the physical and then being the same when we pass over, but just a little bit more worldly wise, well, those who do bad here on earth in the physical, they're going to be the same when they go over there too. So they might be a bit more mischievous or a bit more hurtful, um, and, and a bit more malevolent, male- you know, um, when they pass over. So, yeah, I do believe that people do need to take care when when investigating. I don't think it is something, as much as I like to have fun, but I have been, I've been doing it nearly 20 years now. Right. Um, so I, I'll probably get shot down in flames by many of my, my co-workers and things by saying that, you know, I don't fear anything. Because I have such a belief system and such a um, inner belief in my own protection, my own power, that um, I, I keep that strong mindset of nothing can hurt me, if that makes sense. Right. You know, so, um, one one thing that I'm always curious about is, like, you know, when I ask about the culture or the world beyond, you know, um, are, mm. are, there, are there spirits that were never once alive. Yes, I, I believe it is, yes. Like, old energies, ancient energies um, that come from old times or, like you say, have never never been alive, so to speak. We're all made up of energy, atoms and what have you. So that energy has to come from somewhere. Um, and there'll be certain energy that hasn't took human form, if you like. Um so yeah, I think that answers your question, I think. Yeah, it does. It does. I'm I'm just really trying to understand, you know, like uh you know, if there's some sort of tie in between religion and and ghosts and you know, are people uh basically the the attitude of good and evil and how does this really apply or is this solely um a natural event where good and evil is not really a factor other than than people's personalities? I think it, it, I, I think personally it does come a lot down to um, personalities and the character of the individual. Um, I believe that religion um, plays a big part in the the fear mongering and different things like that. So immediately, like take Ouija boards for example. Mm. As soon as you me- as soon as you mention the word, um, people automatically say it's evil. But it's again. I put my head above the parapet, but I do that with pride by saying it absolutely isn't. It's just one of those things that's been glamorized in, in Hollywood and, and need to appear that way. But in actual fact, it's, a, it's what's the old name for it was a talking board, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So all, all it was was for communication with spirit. So taking that thought, that would mean that mediums are evil and, and things like that, you know, as well, because they do the same the same job, if you like. They still communicate with spirit. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. You're you're a person, Ouija board. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it will, well, yeah. So to speak. Yeah. 
so to speak, yes, but, you know, in essence, that is what we do. We communicate with spirit. So that means that you can't use your, your SP7s anymore because they're evil. And I'm not, say, I'm not saying this in any way whatsoever to ridicule anyone. I'm just ma- merely making my own point. That's all it is. And if, if you look at Ouija boards and what they actually do, and then look at SP7s, then look at K2s, and then look at all the different equipment that we use for communicating with spirit, then they must be evil too. Right, yeah, because they're all be- basically conduits. All, yes, I believe that it's all in the mindset i.e. the character or what have you of the individual that's using them. And if you set your intention correctly, because although I do believe that there is evil as in the, 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 the spirit of a, of, of a spirit that's, that's done wrong in life or what have you, then, um, you know, it's, it's all in the mindset. If you set your intention that you do not want to connect with those, those types of spirit um, and set your some people like protection, don't they? They say prayers and things before investigations or using Ouija boards, and that's that's brilliant. Whatever helps you stay in that mindset. I see. I see. And set the correct intention. So uh, the question here that Kara has proposed is: um, mm-hmm. Has anybody that you know of ever been seriously injured by a ghost? Um, I guess it sounds like probably not. But I guess what's the worst case scenario? You know, for a paranormal investigation going seriously wrong. Uh, the pa- investigation went seriously wrong um, at a place called Jedburgh Castle Jail, uh, which is on the border of Scotland, um, between Scotland and England. And uh, I, it actually happened to myself. All right. um, I, I mean, I've seen members of the public on public investigations getting scratched and maybe maybe a marble or, or something has, has hit them or you know, what have you, or they've been pushed over. But on this particular occasion, it was a public event. Um, there was no significance in the time of year. It wasn't Halloween. It was I can't even remember when it was. I'm sure it was around about April time, if I can remember right. Um, nothing was happening. It was like I said earlier about uh, spirit wanting a break. There was nothing going on. So I thought, the public are looking a little bit restless. And maybe maybe I should um, tap a little bit into a mediumship and um, see what happens, you know. So I took a chair and I um, went up into apparently famous um, haunted cell in, in the men's cell block, and I sat down. And the, the mem- other members of the group got a, a, a Ouija board and put it on the floor, and they were using it just in front of where I was sitting. Um, there was no light in the room whatsoever apart from the phone torch light that they were using on the board and there was an an infrared camera looking at myself Um, and all I was doing was sitting in the chair and just trying to link in with spirit and and just see what I could pick up on but purely by accident I'd gone into a deep trance state which is very, very rare for me not something that I actually ever do Um, and I went into this deep trance state it's all recorded and it's on YouTube um, <coughs> excuse me. And my voice changed, my mannerisms changed. Even on camera, you could see my whole facial features seem to look more withdrawn than they usually are because I'm I carry quite a bit of weight. <laughs> and um, the, the the guys that were recording the whole experience, they could hear this what sounded like a shuffling, scratching noise. And it, this went on for a few minutes, and someone said, look at his feet. And just on the floor, you could see, just by the chair, you could see my feet were, my legs were absolutely still, but my feet were twisting all the way around, so that they were sort of bending back on each other, if that makes sense. Um, and then I began to sort of do this strange sort of mumbling now, the whole time that this was going on, they were trying to get communication on the board, obviously. Um, and they had asked the question, is is Spirit with Ryan? And it shot to yes. Now, no one that was on that board had any connection with me whatsoever. It was all members of the public. My team at that point never, ever got involved in any of the public stuff. That way, they couldn't be accused of interfering. Um and they, it was shot to yes when they asked his, his spirit with Ryan. And then um, the girl who I'd asked to keep an eye on me, you know, just in case, obviously I'd gone in a deep trance state or anything like that. 
Um, she's sort of asking me if I'm okay, but getting no response. Um, and then she said, Spirit, if you were Ryan, what is your name? And I apparently said, and looking back on it, I can see myself saying in an old English accent, you can hear my my accent now, I'm by no means English. Um, but in an old English accent, I said the name Warren. That is and absolutely it, terrifying. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it gets a little bit more. <laughs> I'll try and be brief, obviously. Um, so they said, can you spell your name? And it, uh, they were, like, asking on the board to spell the name. At the same time as it went to each letter to spell the name Warren, I was repeating those letters in an old English accent to the girl sitting next to me and also to the camera. Um, at no point you can see with the cameras looking at me, you can see I'm not, my eyes are not open. I've got no devices near me where I'm listening or anything like that. Then all of a sudden I became violent. I got up and my friend who is was one of my teammates at the time, he's six foot four. I'm only five foot eight. He's six foot four and a Ryan, amateur boxer. Ryan, yep. I got to cut you off. Unfortunately, we only have a minute left of the show, and I want to make sure that oh. you tell our audience where they can find out a little bit more about you before we're cut off by the by the man. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Yeah, so um, uh, yeah. you can find me at the Hauntings TV on Facebook. So just stick onto the the Facebook search bar, the Hauntings TV. You'll find me there, or at official Ryan Griffiths on Facebook and on Twitter. It's at Ryan Griffiths TV, Instagram, Ryan Griffiths TV. Sounds great. Man, you have been a great guest. I have <laughs> really, we, Kara and I have just sat here sort of staring at each other, really enjoying this. Thank you so much for being on the show, and uh, we'll follow up with the online afterwards. Thank you very much for being on the show. You're welcome. All right, welcome back to Radio Wasteland. We've been listening to our guest, Ryan Griffiths, talking to us about Haunted UK, but mainly about his experiences in the sure. UK. And yeah. man, that story. <laughs> yeah, I I wish we'd gotten to finish that. That was too bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, it, it was, we kind of threw it out there as like, a, oh, you know, just a, as, a, as an aside, what's the answer to this question? Right. But I, it turned out to lead to this terrifying... Thing. Well, this yeah. this always stems of my own insecurity, you know, because <laughs> as a horror movie fanatic, I always want to get it in there. Right. But um, I, I always feel sort of like really self-serving if I lead with it. Yeah. You know, so I always kind of throw it in at the no, end. No, I, I see where you're coming you know. from. And then, you know, we have to, when it turns out there is something terrifying. Right, yeah. yeah. I got to start opening with that. Man. <laughs> the whole show could have been that, you know. Yeah. Just right off the bat. What's the scariest thing you've ever seen? Right, yeah. you know, maybe I should warn people. The first thing I'm right. going to ask you is, what's terrifying? And if you don't give me a good answer, interview's over. <laughs> you know, that's, what, that's what I'm doing. Wow, forward. okay, laying down the law there. Yeah, so what did you think of Ryan? I, well, first of all, I really liked what he said at, at the end when he was kind of talking about, you know, well, are Ouija boards evil? Are spirit boxes evil? All that. Like, yeah, that was Because we've heard different things on that question. We've kind of, like, we talked to an exorcist once, and basically what we got is Ouija boards are categorically evil and don't touch them, don't even look at them. Right. And I, I thought Ryan's answer was much more convincing. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so too. But uh, he obviously was coming Logical. from the angle of a paranormal researcher and less right. the angle of a spiritualist at that point. Right. You know, where the yeah. spiritualists seem to be much more adamantly against the well, Ouija board or any sort of Well, Ryan dabbling. is, as he mentioned, a literal spiritualist. Yeah, yeah. Not just someone who's more into the softer, more spiritual side of things. Right. But, like, but he, walks he the follows line. spiritualism. Yeah, he walks the line. Yeah, he does walk the line. But, uh, yeah, I definitely found it uh, interesting. and it pretty you know, I, The yeah. way I imagine it, I... I watched this show of the most um, coolest houses in the UK or something like that. It really sure. has nothing to do with anything other than the they have like a summer porch. Mm -hmm. And the two were talking about it and they're just all, oh, yeah, this would be um, a really great place to sit on a gray day. And right. so every time I hear gray day, I think of England and uh, or Britain and uh, 
and well, he was Scottish, but um, sure. I think of the UK, and so I imagine these sort of gray, wet, awesomely haunted um, environments that I just wish so much I could be a part of. And I don't know if that's me overly, um, you know. Well, the great thing about ghosts is I think they can, you can kind of get them in any climate, right? And it can still be spooky. You know, you've got your sort of old Western sort of desert style ghosts who, who yeah, rustle I guess there's in a... and then, you know, it's, it's like that old harmonica player. Why? He's been dead for 30 years. Totally. You know, that kind of thing. And then you've also After got After he your... choked his wife to death with his harmonica. Ex- you can still hear her playing <laughs> a C major in the distance. And then you've got the, you know, I I spotted her again, the woman with the black veil wandering right. across the moor kind yeah. of thing. You, you know, you... Ghosts are real are really very universal. That's so. true. We've had Craig Owen on where he was yeah. talking about ghosts in Hollywood and Los Angeles. And, you know, we know right. that there's a lot there, the Black Dog. And, and, and you know, a this, lot of history. This made me feel a little bit better about the United States because we were we were demonstrating some insecurity in the age of our buildings. Yeah. But it sounds true. like, you know, it it's not the age of the buildings that's right. That it's, counts. It's, it's the quality of the murder. It's what's inside them. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. It's what's inside <laughs> that's now outside and spread all across the room. They're really, all over the ceiling. Right, right. Just everywhere. <laughs> under but the yeah, cushions. Very inspiring, man. Every time I have like a guest like this, that's from another part of the world or from some place that I would just love to be a part of. It's like you just don't want to get out of here. I do. I no. I, need I, a, I know exactly what you mean. We need to talk to Andrea about getting a travel budget. <laughs> we need a travel budget. <laughs> yeah, well, we need some money first. So. Well, yeah, but I mean, Andrea, you know, she's in charge of that stuff. Where's the money, Andrea? <laughs> Where's my travel budget? You know, I think yeah. I think Where's my I, money, Lebowski. That's all I can. That's <laughs> yeah. all I can hear when you we say that. We want the money, Lebowski. <laughs> that's a nice marmot. Um, yeah, so it's like. Andrea, I feel that like if I were to really reel it in, I could probably live on like a three hundred dollar a day stipend as we travel around doing this stuff. So sure. So maybe she can get that together. For <laughs> All right, you're listening to Radio Wasteland. You've been listening to our guest Ryan Griffiths. Come on back. We got more. All right, welcome back to Radio Wasteland. Kara, in the news today... That's right. Um, there was something that I saw in the news that I thought was potentially conspiratory mm-hmm. that uh, I was surprised that you didn't bring up, and so I'm kind of curious on on your take on it. Uh, I'm not sure how to say his name, but uh, Jesse Smollett? Are you oh, familiar yes. with this? Yes, no, uh, that's a good point. And I... See, I, I didn't know if it was quite in this last week, because I thought it was... Well, I mean, sort of on the cusp. It, it sort of has been coming to light in the last week that he might right. have set this that he on. might have set the whole thing up. Yeah. yeah, and I remember people like I hang out in left wing progressive circles, mm-hmm. so people were utterly taken in. I would say, like no, no one thought that he set this up right. initially. Yeah, yeah, people believed him instantly, and. Not to ride my own high horse, but I was a little apprehensive about it when I first heard it. Right. And I was apprehensive for two reasons. I believed it, but for I was one, wrong. He so. wouldn't turn over his phone. I thought that was a little weird. Yeah. And then the other reason was when the initial report came out, they were hesitant to describe the rope as rope. They 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 called it ki- a kind of rope around his neck, like implying that it was like twine or something. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the initial Yarn. report the, yeah, the, that I heard, it, <laughs> it didn't sound that menacing. Um, How do you like the cat's cradle, dude? And, you know, that's just <laughs> me going like, oh, man, I wonder if, you know, this is. And then when it really came out that that happened or that that might have happened, I guess we don't right. know. Yeah, you know, it's I, alleged that he made it up right, still, right. but. You know, I I was really sort of like amazed by it, and I, I mm-hmm. think the conspiratory part of it is so. Uh, supposedly, he is was coming up on trying out for a play, right? Where he was basically uh, the the target of racist and homophobic attack, mm-hmm. and so the implication that people are putting down is that he tried to fabricate this experience to make himself like the perfect person to make it more eligible for the role. Yeah. But, you know, it, it makes me wonder. So uh, I'm not willing to put this guy in this box just yet. But when you hear that this might be the case, 
what do you lean towards? Do you lean towards furthering of the career or do you lean towards um, political manipulation? I guess I don't understand the question. Well, the two motivations behind oh, somebody right. doing this, you know. Well, I I mean, I don't think the DNC sat him down and was like, listen, we're we're below our hate crime quota this year. You don't think we Tom need- Perez sat him down or whatever the <laughs> no, DNC chairman no, name is? No, <laughs> I, I think he cynically exploited people's political beliefs yeah. in order to further his career, Yeah, which is, I mean, so you might... It sounds like I'm saying career, but I'm kind of saying both because that's like that is what all politicians do, actually, too. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so his career is very like you're abstract. always exploiting people's beliefs, right. whether you're an actor or a politician or a writer or or, or a journalist or or whatever. Right. You know. Yeah. Well, as a as a parent, I definitely am familiar with the concept of positive manipulation. Sure. You know, I manipulate my kids all the time. Right. You know, and hopefully to positive ends, not negative ones. I mean, pretty much any form of media, any story, any movie, you know, it's it's going to have a message of some kind. At the very least, even if it's not like a cogent message, it's going to have certain assumptions about the way the world works baked into it. Right. So So it's impossible to make something that's not political. Yeah, and I, I guess my last thought on this is I'm really interested to see. So so here we are with um, the left uh, believing in, um, you know, standing up, putting an end to racism, sexism, homophobia. You know, that's that's a big part of the platform that they're coming from. Sure. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot of Republican or conservative side people have fallen to this. And here we in the news have two liberal sided people um jesse smollett and also uh the guy with the blackface photo the yeah the virginia governor whose name i can't remember i can't but either yeah man. but that photo it's like when i i heard the story <laughs> either the guy in blackface or the guy in the clan robe yeah, but you know either way well when i first heard the story i'm just all like Oh my gosh, that's crazy. And then I saw the picture and I'm all, oh my God, <laughs> like, how is that okay? You know, in what era in history is this an acceptable photo to take? <laughs> you know, oh my God. Yep. So uh, I am curious to see how society either attacks or defends these people. Right. You know, and, and I'm curious to see that because the, the right is always saying like, oh, well, if this was a, Repo- uh, a Democrat, it wouldn't be taught, tr- treated this way. You know, and uh, so I'm, I'm curious to see if there's any truth. Well, you know, I, I think that I would definitely be on the side of saying, yes, both sides are nakedly hypocritical almost all the time. Oh, so, I, yeah, I, I think I, I know we agree. On <laughs> I that, think yeah. people who are on the left will probably downplay these incidents, and yeah. people on the right will probably say, you know, exploit see, them see as that, much as possible. That right, proves, yeah. you know, everyone's racist. Right, yeah, <laughs> exactly. All right, you're listening to Radio Wasteland. When we come back, we're going to talk about what's coming up next week. Welcome back to Radio Wasteland. All right, Karen, next week we have our guest Michael Feely talking about the Anunnaki of Nibiru and the Snake Men of Iridu. Well, Are they real? <laughs> now we're finally asking the real questions asking here real on Radio questions. Wasteland. Yeah, well, Nibiru is something that is just so incredibly interesting to me. You know, the, the, the It's whole incredibly idea. popular. <laughs> you know, it, it is, but not nearly... Uh, compared to what it was five or six years ago. No, you know? no, that's that's true, and it's interesting. That it's kind of it really has emerged a lot in in that time, and in fact, it's not that different in flat Earth on that respect. Like, yeah, it seems ten to be... fifteen years ago, heck, even five years ago, most of what was in the internet about flat Earth was basically people who were pretending to believe in flat Earth to drive other people crazy. Right, and now it. The communities are basically people who do actually believe yeah. to drive people crazy. <laughs> uh, I can't, uh, you know, I, I can do Nibiru if, if, I, if it turned yeah, out Yeah, Nibiru that, is a, a few degrees. Yeah, if, if it turned out Nibiru was something or, you know, I know that there's right. the possibility of, a, of another ice giant or terrestrial sure. planet out in the, 
you know. Yeah, uh, that I'm all on board with. You know, you know? I, I, so I can see some possibilities there, but uh, Flat Earth Man, I just can't do it. No, I, no. Uh, I can't. I, I'm so sorry to people <laughs> that are out there that believe in the Flat Earth. I, I just, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, not to you, but for you. <laughs> I, I can't even be nice about it. It is just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, that's how I am with a I, lot of things. Yeah, I but just, I, I have to be nice about it because that's how I am with almost everything I, I disagree I, with. I, yeah. <laughs> that's a no for me. That's a hard pass for me. Is the flat Earth? I can't do it. But, but I am excited to find out more yeah. about because the part of me that's like into the fantasy, into the mm-hmm. story. I mean, even with our guest this evening, you know, I was wanting to know the culture behind ghosts. Sure. You know, um, yeah. I enjoy that aspect of of Nibiru. You know, the influence. if they leave their houses, do they get eaten by sand? worms yeah you know, exactly that. <laughs> <laughs> you know i i i enjoy the sort of fantasy of of the mystery of you know another mm-hmm. civilization out there you know yeah and, and are they manipulating us i don't know and uh so nibiru uh something i'm way behind as far as the snake men of iridu that's a new one i don't know what iridu is or the snake men yeah i guess there must be a connection there right yeah two things from nibiru that that do that I do think there's something there is scientists have talked a lot about the possibility of a, a massive object being in sort of the outer reaches of our solar system where we haven't explored very much mm-hmm. and there's not like a star there so we can't really see very well into that area and also the possibility of civilizations in earth's ancient past right that may have informed ancient history I think both of those are, are very plausible areas of exploration. What's your take on like genetic jumps in in human evolution? Do you feel that that that's a viable argument that people are making, or do you feel that like well, no, there's obvious there's an obvious evolutionary path here? Well, I I might not be understanding what you're saying. Well, a lot of people say you know, uh, so it's, it's I think gone there are periods the of faster evolution when there's like a climate disaster or I one see. thing or another that's putting increased evolutionary pressure to change. So you don't feel that there is a a large gap in the evolutionary thing that that no no not really <laughs> okay well that's that seems to be a big argument of a lot of yeah. people with Nibiru and uh, with alien. Um, intervention in our ancient past right yeah people always invoke that and i think it's kind of a a solution in search of a problem because really our, our fossil records for people are, are quite good and you know there there are some some gaps where we're like well we assume this is kind of what happened in this area but we don't know but you know when you compare humans to other species you see that it it kind of luck of the draw with how fossils work out you know I if see, you look at right. the evolution of the horse we have pretty much every step. Like, there's kind of no missing links. With humans, we have most of the steps. You know, with some animals, we barely have anything. It, it's just kind of the way it works out. We we can see pieces of the evolutionary web. And so it's it's just totally unsurprising to me the amount of evidence we have. And I, I just don't know that there's anything in particular in the fossil record that requires additional explanation or, you know, points to some grand mystery i, I think i kind of know how it all works were you ever a futurama watcher no unfortunately so the missing link and and jared will like this i'm not going to do justice to it but there's this one episode where they're talking about the missing link and they're mm-hmm. just all but where's the mi- but we haven't found the missing link and the professor's all yes we have we found this one and he's all, but where's the missing link between that one? And he's just all, yes, we have. Exactly. We have this one. And then like 29 later, he's, the guy's just all, but where's the missing link between that one? He's all, all right, I'll give it to you there. We only have 29 missing links, you know. <laughs> that's basically not a parody. Like, right, that's yeah. basically the interaction between anthropologists. and Right, yeah. yeah. And, well, I don't know. The people who don't like evolution. Right. So you don't think we're genetically altered slave monkeys? Uh, I mean, we could be. I just don't think there's a good reason to think that as of right now. <laughs> well, my question to the audience is, are we... I'm sure I'll get schooled next week. ...genetically altered slave monkeys? And is the Bureau Real? You're listening to Radio Wasteland. Check us out next week with our guest Michael Feely, the Anunnaki of Nibiru, and the Snake Man of Iridu. Are they real? <laughs>